Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today on the bench, I have this Radio Shack. Radio, Radio Shack. Shack. Regulated 12 volt power supply. Now I'm planning to do some other videos like the son of Easy Amp and I have another kind of an instructional video on transistors in the works here. But uh, this problem kind of popped up here. I want to see what's going on with this. It doesn't seem to be regulating anymore. It's supposed to put out 13.8 volts is the actual output. So what I was doing, I was testing this Luminaire du Jour. And let's see here. Yeah, that's what it says. It's a Luminaire du Jour. It's LED par type bulb or MR16 I guess it is and uh, I was wanting to see what its actual power draw is it says it's 6.6 .6 watts so I was measuring the current and the voltage and when I checked the voltage I noticed it was reading pretty high 18 volts so uh, let's take a look at this thing see what's going on Okay, with the meter in the shot here, looking at the back of the supply. The Luminaire du jour is connected. And uh, I'm not worried about the voltage on this because it's meant for AC volts. And after you rectify and filter 12 volts, it's going to be around that anyway. However, our supply should not be putting out that kind of voltage. So let's turn it on. Lights up the Luminaire du Jour. And let's see. I'm going to switch my leads around. 18.3 volts. Yeah, I would say that is quite excessive. So I wonder what's going on with the supply. This uses a discrete type voltage regulator. It has a zener diode and a Donington transistor to regulate the voltage. Maybe the uh, pass transistor has shorted or I don't know, Zener went open or something like that and we're getting unregulated voltage here. Okay, I have removed the top to the Radio Shack regulated supply. I have to be careful because the main side has exposed parts, it's not insulated. It looks like we have a nice sized transformador in there. Looks like about 60 volt amps maybe. A full bridge rectifier down there. And notice they riveted everything in so that makes it funner to work on. You have to drill out the rivets and replace it with screws. And the uh, regulator board here with the transistors mounted onto a heat sink. And this case here is aluminum. And that helps dissipate heat. So I guess what I need to do is check voltages. Almost forgot I found the schematic which is in the owner's manual and uh, yes yeah, a simple regulator circuit here so the mains comes in goes to the transformer full bridge and uh, look, the main filter cap there's a kind of a uh, limiting uh, short limiting so if you short the output the limits the current so you don't blow up the transistors. So what they're doing, they're taking a bit of current here, filtering it, sending it over to the base of these Darlington configured transistors. And uh, from the base to ground is a 16 volt zener. The output is in the emitter circuit of our Darlington configured pair there. 
And what do we know about emitter follower type circuits? Well, they have no voltage gain. So we're putting 16 volts into the base. We have a couple diode drops. So we'll get our regulated output here be uh, uh, 16, 15 something, or for actually 14 point something. Okay, coming off the transformer, we're getting about 17 and a half volts. And have to switch over to DC. Measure across the main filter cap. I'm trying to not block the shot. And we're getting 22, about 22 and a half volts. So that was quite a bit higher than the 18 volts we were getting. So yeah, some, something weird is going on, that's for sure. Measuring the Zener diode voltage. Yep, that's pretty close. 16.3 volts. And uh, check the output again. And wait a minute here. We're getting 15 volts. There's no load on it. So we're getting 18 volts a minute ago. So did I disturb something? Maybe there's a bad solder joint put the light back on the output here 18 and a half so the voltage is shooting up when we put a load on that's kind of weird I'm starting to wonder if maybe uh, this bulb is putting noise or something you know the there's a driver in this bulb which uh, could be releasing noise back on this and maybe it's affecting the circuit let me try and like an incandescent bulb for a load in my collection of oddball light bulbs I have this 12 volt flame shaped bulb as you can see the filament there is smaller 15 watts so connected it to the power supply here let me turn it on and we'll measure the voltage again and see what's going on now 14.7 volts so yeah I'm starting to think that this LED bulb is putting out a lot of noise from its switching supply and affecting the regulator circuit here Okay, let's take a look on the scope here. I hooked up the bulb du jour again. And I'm scoping the output of the power supply. Let's fire this guy up. And holy moly, would you look at that. That looks like filter ripple, but that's all this junk. It's uh eight hundred and something kilohertz. It's running up there close to one megahertz. So yeah, it looks like some sort of oscillation. Seven point something volts peak to peak. Yeah, that's uh, pretty bad. Okay, now I have the incandescent bulb connected. Let's turn that up. Looks like a slight ripple. A very small amount of ripple. But yeah, the supply is working normal here. I'm trying another LED bulb to see what it does, and nothing. It's normal. 15.1 volts, so the voltage at low load is about what it should be. Okay, I put the offending bulb back in, the bulb du jour. And what I'm going to try is to put this one microfarad film cap across the output. 
turn that up a little bit. And yeah, that fixes it. That collapses that oscillation back down to nothing, or very small at least. One thing I'm seeing here with the schematic, there is no bypass capacitor across the output of this thing. So, you know, with a certain type of load, it could be possible to make this go unstable or, you know, oscillate in sympathy with the waveform that this bulb might be putting out. So, yeah. What I think I should do is solder a cap from the emitter to ground you know, as close as I can on the circuit board and you know, stop that problem from happening. Okay, so I found a perfect spot for this capacitor. It's right near the emitter lead of the output transistor and ground. And it's right on the top here. I was able to J-hook it around the leads. I left it long enough and soldered it in. I tried different capacitor values to make sure I wasn't overkill or you know too small a value. I tried a 0.1 and it did diminish it quite a bit, but still a little bit there. So yeah, I think a one microfarad film cap is just perfect for that. So let's see what happens now. This is across the capacitor and it looks perfect. Right at the output, which is really electrically the same, but since it goes through some wire and circuit breaker, there'll probably be a little bit. Yeah, there's a little bit there. It's just switching noise. 3.5 or 3.1 jumps around megahertz. Measuring the output and the uh, voltage is where it should be 15 volts. That's one thing with this power supply. The voltage has always been a little high on it. I know as you load it down, it drops, but. I'm going to poke through my drawer here and see if I can replace that Zener diode. See if I have a uh, lower value. Okay, I took out this 16 volt Zener, put in this one that measured 14 volts. I didn't clip the leads off yet, just in case I have to take it back out if I don't like how it works. This meter has a neat mode. In the diode check, it has the regular 3 volt or 15 volt, so it allows you to check devices at a higher voltage. And this one was measuring 14.3 or something. I think it's a 14 volt Zener. Didn't have a 15. So I'll pop it in there and run with that, see what it does. Okay, a gator clipped the meter to the output here, so I don't have to sit there and hold it. With no load, we're getting 13 and a half volts. So I have this 35 watt halogen bulb, which would overload it. It's, it'd be close to a three amp load and it's rated two and a half. So I just want to see how that drops the voltage. 12.6, oh, that's fine. That's perfect. As long as it stayed above 12 volts good enough for me. So let's make sure it still behaves with the bulb du jour. And yeah, it just drops a little bit. Now it's not going to regulate like those integrated circuit voltage regulators, but as long as it removes the ripple and of course doesn't oscillate, it's just fine for my needs. One thing you should be mindful of, though, if you make such an adjustment, now the pass transistor has to drop more voltage at a given current, so it could run hotter at this lower voltage. 
It's not a huge amount, so I think we'll be okay. Okay, so I clipped off the excess leads on that Zener diode. I'm going to keep it in there because voltages are what I think is more desirable now. And I put the cover back on. And there you have it. Got rid of those wonky high voltages oscillations with that LED bulb load. And got rid of that excessive voltage, you know, 15 volts at light loads. It's a little excessive to me. Now it operates more at what I would think a 12 volt supply should be. But I'm not through yet. I want to try one more experiment. I'm kind of curious if the bulb du jour here will affect one of these chip regulators. This is an LM7812 12 volt regulator. And across the input it has the capacitor. But just like in the Radio Shack power supply, there is no bypass on the output of the regulator. So I want to see what the voltage is. Well, doesn't seem to bother this. I'm getting 12 volts out. Pretty much the same with or without the load. See what the scope has to say. Okay, scoping across the output of the regulator. Again, no capacitor across its output. There's a small amount of ripple. But it's not throwing the voltage off. Let's see what happens when I pull off the input cap. Oh, it gets quite a bit uglier. Let's see here. Uh, 3.7 megahertz. Now the regulators have pretty low output impedance, but you know, at a higher frequency it's not going to be as low. But it does show the importance of using a capacitor across the input and the outputs. And the meter saying the voltage is 10.8 volts now. So yeah, it does have some effect, but of course I took the filter cap off on the input. One last thing before I wrap it up here. I made a little B-field probe. Just practice some paperclip origami and you know wrap that around, make sure it touches. So you got a little loop there. And if I bring that near the LED bulb, just kind of move it around until I pick up a good, strong signal. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we're picking up some signal there. I was just wondering the actual uh, switch mode frequency there. 659 kilohertz. Okay, here's another LED bulb. I just move my little probe around and oh, look at that. Much stronger signal there. It runs up about the same frequency too. See how it jitters like that? See, this is a trigger point. So I think it's uh, like a spread spectrum type. So what they're doing is changing the frequency a little bit that spreads all the harmonics out kind of into a field of noise. So it makes it less susceptible to interfering with uh, radios and things. Though it still does. It still interferes with my radio. Well, that puts the wrap on this one. Modifications to my Radio Shack regulated supply and some playing around on the bench. Thanks for watching. It's just a uh, Darlington type transistor with a Xenon. Xenon.